right, so the bar chord. The bar chord's like the new frontier from where we've been. It's, it's I'm not gonna lie, they're definitely more challenging. It's gonna take a while, it's gonna take patience, you're building up some calluses, you know, get, get you a little bit tougher, right? But what's very cool is there's only a few shapes that we actually need to learn. And then you can play chords all over the neck with only those couple shapes. And you'll find that typically with what I'm gonna show you, these four shapes that we're gonna work on, it's pretty much what people use. Now, you know, jazz and other different styles of music, they will use some different scary looking chords. But these are gonna be really simple really fun, really easy. With practice, I know you can do it. Everybody's done it, obviously, right? We're all playing. We've all learned how to do it at some point or another. Some people obviously are going to do it quicker than others, but that's all right. So we did a lesson on the capo earlier. Now, what's cool is when you do bar chords, your first finger basically becomes that capo. So A, not only you know, can you move your finger wherever you want, whereas a capo is fixed, but the same kind of thing applies to where you're basically playing those same open position style chords behind your index capo, right? <laughs> so there's only a couple of different shapes. I'll go into them later, but there's just two, for example, right? That's major and minor, and it's just as simple as that. Now, there's a different shape on the string below, but there's two more shapes on that, and then that's really it. You have major and minor on two different sets of strings, or all the strings that you're basically gonna bar, and it becomes this thing that's like, oh, really, that's it, right? It's very simple. And what's cool is when you combine the bar chord with your open position chords, pretty soon, any song that you pretty much ever wanna learn is now accessible to you. So. Don't be afraid. We're going to take this slow and easy. Start off with one, maybe introduce two, you know, with some familiar chords that we know already. And before you know it, bar chord will be nothing to you, right? It'll just be a nice thing that you overcame, and now you are on your way. So let's get to it. All right, the B minor chord. Now, when I taught students, this is the first one that I taught them. So I figured I would extend it and share it and let it be the first one I teach you as well. Um, it's cool because it's from the A string down, so we don't have to you know, hit all the strings at once. But it is called the B minor because we got an open A string right here. Like in the beginning, we learned E, A, D, G, you know, et cetera, those different strings. We got the B here and then the E repeating down here as well. But if you took the note, A, the next letter in the alphabet is B. Okay, now in guitar, it only goes A through G before it starts repeating over and over again. So this is gonna be the secret to our bar chords and knowing what they're called and where they're located. So we'll go over that a little bit more. I'll give you another example on the next chord. So we got, think of this first finger, like I said before, as kind of a capo, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it across that second fret from the A string all the way to the high E string, which is this one right here. So you're gonna bar that with your first finger. Now another thing is people get in the habit of trying to go super flat with their finger, and it really creates an interesting kind of thing with your wrist. Now if you notice, the strings are kind of almost on the side, or the indentions on my finger are almost kind of on the side because I don't play the bar chord straight up and down. I almost have a little bit of a tilt to my finger, so it's a little bit on the side, which makes it easier for these fingers to do what they need to do as well. Now, after that, you're gonna see that, or maybe you don't notice, but if you look, you actually have an A minor chord behind that. Now I said before, we have E versions and A versions of chords. So when you're playing from the A string down, it's gonna be the A version of the chord, whether it's an A major or an A minor. In this instance, we're doing a minor shape. So we have the second fret all the way barred from the A string down. Now our second finger is gonna be on the third fret, the B string. Then we're gonna take our ring finger and we're gonna to go to the D string, fourth fret, and then we're gonna put our pinky right below that same fret. 
So we're going to start with the A string, right? And then what we're going to do from there is just play the next string down, the D string. And what we're doing is we're checking to make sure that each string is making a sound, just like we did in all of our other chords. Now where it gets tricky is a lot of times people will put a lot of pressure on this first note or this lowest string and kind of forget about the high string. So remember, it's a bar, and a bar is evenly displaced pressure across all of the strings. Now, you are actually fretting the other strings with these fingers right here. So you don't have to kill, I mean, you don't have to really grip it super hard. Just remember, same pressure as you're pressing with these guys, right here and here, but it just needs to, you need to be mindful of, this needs to be distributed across multiple strings, okay? So we got. And that is a B minor shape because we're using the A minor shape of the chord behind this finger. Now, why it's called a B minor, again, this note right here, this A string is a B note. So whenever you move your fingers to another fret, like say I went up here, the next note would be C, the next note would be D. So if I were to take that same shape up to the D note, now, even though it's that A minor shape, it's a D minor chord. Right, so that's kind of the mystery of bar chords. They're like, well, I don't know where an A minor, you know, power chord is or a B minor or you know any of this stuff. It's just this finger is what the letter of the chord is. So that's the D note. If it was here, it would be C. And then this is the shape, the A minor shape behind it. So we know it's a minor shape. And now we know, since we're learning, learn these two top strings, really important, the notes, because it'll really make bar chords and playing bar chords really simple as you go along. Later on, you might learn how to solo or do all these other kind of things. And it's all based upon these top two strings, whether it's a scale, you know, you start with the note and you plug in the fingerings of the scale position or whatever. It really will help you to just learn the notes on this string, the low E string and the A string. And for chords, that's really a great way to immediately know where to go is because you know your notes up here. So. B minor, let's use B minor in an actual chord progression. We'll use a B minor chord with some open position chords and we'll be on our way to doing bar chords.